Well, another level up. Let's uh, go into the auditing uh, part. This is where you can make uh, the money uh, if you do it uh, correct. Um, I think everyone here uh, who has development skills um, can be uh, of more value if you do some things very good. Uh, it can be uh, automation for your team. For example, running the right tools to help increasing the quality. Or it can be uh, that you are the, the guy or girl uh, with the security knowledge uh, into the team uh, or in the team. Um, there's always something which you or which makes you different than the rest of your team. Even if there's a brilliant uh, programmer uh, in, the, in the team and everyone is asking the questions uh, there, there are a few new developments which I think you can learn right now and apply it uh, as well. So that people think, OK, I have to come to Robert, for example, nowadays, because he's the guy with the security knowledge. A lot of people think about auditing. Well, that's uh, those uh, people with uh, with the ties and uh, with uh, the dresses and uh, no, not uh, <laughs> not the gentleman in the back. <laughs> but, uh, the um, auditors are usually the people who are less technical, and that's that's a shame because they read something, uh, a piece of policy, or and they want to apply it to the technical people and say, okay, we have to do this, while not knowing something about uh, the technical details. And I'm not sure how many of you already uh, experience auditors nowadays. Yeah, a few, okay. Then I guess it, it sounds familiar that, that they ask you to do things which you think, yeah, but wait a sec, there's a story behind it. or. If we want to enforce that, well, we cannot work anymore. I think that uh, it would help if uh, those kind of people come closer to the technical people, and especially uh, uh, the other way around as well. If we can come up from the technical side and help explaining how things really work, uh, that we can uh, become of more value. And uh, I'm going to share you a single uh, uh, story I experienced myself. I was security officer for Philips uh, for the data center team. So people saw me as the, 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 the security guard with, uh, well, I didn't have a dog, but uh, they thought, OK, this is a serious guy. We all always need to apply all kind of hardening stuff. And why are we doing it? But we also have uh, or had uh, auditors. And what people discussed even more was auditors. Because, well, then a corporate uh, guy, they, which they never spoke before or just once uh, uh, a year, had uh, stuff about socks uh, to tell. And, uh, well, it was important because of the, uh, the stock exchange. And uh, if we wouldn't uh, comply, that uh, we would, uh, as a Philips, uh, not being at, uh, uh, at the exchange anymore. So there was a lot uh, involved. But those guys were never able to really uh, translate uh, the meaning of the policy into technical details. And uh, for me, uh, I was uh, in between. I was the, the security officer. So I had to deal with policy on one side and with technical stuff on the other side. And I was the bridge to help people say, OK, if we apply these pieces of the policy, into <coughs> technical controls, we are still fine. And also for the auditors themselves, uh, they didn't understand what the technical guys were meaning, like uh, from a network point of view or from um, a system management point of view. They simply cannot keep up with all the technology. And that's something like uh, we as developers also, and also system administrators, can be of more value. If we can help those kind of people with um, explaining what we can really do instead of boring, um, uh, yeah, boring policy stuff and make it more interesting. So auditing can be uh, a, a boring thing, but it can also be uh, something of, uh, of value. What we see uh, with, uh, with auditing usually is uh, well, that you perform an audit 
and it can be a technical audit, but it can also be in a, in a, well, a policy uh, audit like uh, like SOX or PCI. I'm not sure if someone already experienced that PCI DSS. Okay, a few. Um, what you what you do now is uh, well, you you start the audit. A lot of findings uh, show up. And then, uh, well, okay, we have to harden a few things. We have to disable SSL version 3 uh, because it's uh, uh, a vulnerability. And, well, you get a long, long list. And especially if you're using a vulnerability scanners, you get a long list of items uh, to do. And it's uh, easy to, to say after a while, well, let's uh, stop with it. It's simply too much uh, activities. And again, as a security officer myself, um, we run uh, in the data center of Philips a vulnerability scan, and it found within hours 10,000 of uh, items to do, like FTP servers, which had uh, uh, open accounts, and not just read-only accounts, but also which you can uh, write uh, actually data into it. Uh, of course, systems were not patched, all kind of things. And I can assure you, if you have a list of 10,000 items, it's getting a very serious uh, job, uh, and especially because even if I told, uh, for example, a developer or a system administrator about the issue, they said, yeah, well, but that system cannot be patched because it's running that software on it. And if it's being updated, then that software doesn't run anymore. So it's an, uh, an interesting one. And uh, of course, the bigger the company becomes, the more of those kind of discussions uh, you have. So I propose a new kind of uh, strategy to apply. Start with smaller uh, pieces. Focus on what kind of systems you want uh, to audit and what you want to have uh, in your scope. Then uh, perform the audit. Then focus again. Apply hardening. And then start over. So instead of trying to fix those 10,000 things, just say, no, I want only that network environment to be scanned. And within that network uh, environment, I only want to fix, for example, the HTTP headers and put them in. And if I've finished that, then I'm going to do, uh, do it again and focus on something else. So make sure what you scan, and it can be on application level or it can be on systems, Start with a small audit, collect uh, the data, then de determine well what kind of um, uh, yeah changes you want to make. Question there? Yes, sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, I would want to start uh, with how have you define it, the, the major risks and your mm -hmm. from a technical point of view, like how to do HTTP headers or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, if I were a manager, uh, then I could not judge the value of your approach. Exactly. Start risk based. Maybe. Okay. So the question is, can I start from a risk point of view and start there? Yeah. Yeah. Then you should already know about your environment and say, okay, <coughs> where is the data, the most important data, for example, located? What are the crown jewels for my company? So you can say uh, the environment where all the, um, the data processing and the payments are being done, that might be a very interesting uh, start. Because if that ge gets infected or hacked, the impact might be usually much bigger and could maybe even uh, uh, get the, the, the business uh, or get the company out of business. So that could be one area, for example, to start. Or you can start and say, OK, I actually don't know anything about risks in my environment. Let's start with what we know. And that could be, for example, the HTTP headers. You can say, let's uh, first scan the whole network, and only for the HTTP port, and say to apply those headers. So if you know the risk and know the, the areas where risk uh, can be the highest, I would definitely <coughs> start there. Does that uh, answer it? Yeah? 
Then, uh, th yeah, then you make up a uh, hardening plan. So you first do the audit. Then you find uh, well some uh, items you want to fix, and it can be, for example, those uh, those headers. You make a plan on how can we implement it uh, the easiest way possible. And nowadays you have all kind of uh, configuration management tools like a Puppet and CF Engine and Ansible. So if you have those in your company, really use them because you can quickly uh, make changes. Then do the scan again to make sure that everything is fixed. And then start over with a new uh, piece. And that can be the next uh, risk or it can be the next technical piece. Uh, an important one is documentation because usually people just do things and then they do don't document it. But especially if you have exceptions, you want those have uh, you want to have them documented so that you know okay we applied this hardening on all systems except this one because well something broke and we accept that fact that uh, that system is not hardened and of course as uh, i said uh, the repeating you have to start over again it's better to do all year around security than just do it once when the auditor comes in and then wait for next year because you have a much uh, bigger challenge if you do it only once a year. You can better do it small and tell the auditor, look, this is what we are doing all year round. It will also give you uh, well bonus points with the auditor uh, himself. Uh, and it also will make your, the, the life for your manager easier because you can tell your manager, hey, if we have this tool in place, we can make sure that we do security the whole year instead of, well, just in that month, and then we have to collect all the evidence and data samples.